it's Brandy of bloggingbrandy.com and in this video I'm going to show you how I started shopping at Goodwill, flipping those items online for cash, and eventually made enough money to turn my side hustle into a full-time career. So if you're looking for some extra cash and want to get started with items you may already have around the house, then this video is for you. And action! That this stuff at Goodwill is not hard to do at all. And I don't know why y'all keep thinking that it's so hard to do because if you just Google online, which is how I found out about it, I actually started out with some guys. They were called the Startup Bros. And they did more of like importing, exporting. But the first part of their course, if you wanted to start learning how to do this online, they taught you how to go on to Amazon and eBay and check out the metrics to see like what was worth selling and not. And the other cool thing is that they told you what you should and shouldn't sell just because of things they tried. So that's how I learned and I actually. So this makes me think about back when or when I quit my job. I was working selling stocks, like trading billions of dollars with the push of a button for a very well-known financial firm. And I came across this seminar after I started Googling, or which I actually called out and went to this seminar, how to sell stuff online. But I came across this Goodwill idea from the Startup Bros and it ended up changing my life. So I quit my job and here we are, what, three years later now? Loaded a couple of apps on my phone just to show you this. There's another one called Profit Bandit, but you have to pay for it. People say it's really good, so if you want to pay for it, that's cool. But I try to teach you how to do stuff for free. So, Amazon Seller App for eBay, the Seller Profit Calculator, or What's It Worth? Both of those are free. So, we're going to use those and the power of the internet, aka Google, to find the prices of some items here at Goodwill. Some of this stuff works for me, which may not work for you, but it's just trial and error and what you like and what time you want to spend on it. I, I spent like several years doing this and I ended up moving on to auctions and buying new items. I also tried return items. Don't ever do return items like ever. It's been an, if you do, only sell them on eBay. We're gonna show you how to shop at Goodwill and flip it for money. So you can make a little extra side money. That can be your hustle. And you can start doing that on your lunch breaks or whenever you leave work, your days off, on the weekends. If I was you, I'd get up early and I would go for the time they open. I will hit a bunch of good ones at one time. I'm gonna try this. Okay, this is my checklist and I'm gonna go over it with you. I made this when I used to go to auctions and sell stuff online. New items is what I would sell, but you're not always gonna get that when you go to thrift stores and like Goodwills. If it's used, just make sure when you're on Amazon, I would totally only sell new stuff. But if you're gonna sell used, beware. It's really hard to sell used stuff on Amazon. Make sure and do a photo, new or used, vintage. If you do used, either try a vintage item or make sure that the used item is gently used. Um, and I mean, I used to buy all kinds of stuff and like so I have like packaging and a retag gun and like labels. So uh, FYI, if you're gonna do this, just do it right. So multiple quantities. If you're able to buy something in multiple quantities, it's gonna make you more money. If you're able to sell something in multiple quantities, it's gonna make you more money. The new and vintage, multiple quantities, small and lightweight. You're gonna be shipping these items so you want to be small and lightweight. Not restricted or regulated. If you are selling on Amazon, your items may be restricted or regulated. Certain categories are, make sure you check that. If you have the Amazon seller app, you will not have this problem. These are the items or the categories I would stick to. And not to say that you can't go outside of these, like books or other items. Those are just not things that I sell, but totally things that you could sell and might be worth money. And pets, um, those are awesome categories to sell. Baby and kids. Baby and kids. 
I don't have babies or kids, but it's good. It's solid. Home and kitchen, fitness, and novelty items. Non-perishable, not expired. Do not sell anything that can expire, that you can eat, that it won't be there. It's just common sense. If you don't know how long this can sit on your shelf. You're aiming for, I would say, one to three months, but you're trying to sell this stuff like now. You're not trying to get this stuff sitting on there. You're trying to beat everybody up with prices. You're supposed to have the best video, the best photos. You're supposed to put your stuff out there like you know what you're talking about. Non-breakable, no glass. Mugs, not to say that glass and stuff is not a good money maker. I've done it before. I'm just saying be aware that you may ship it and it may get broke and somebody may want their money back. And another thing, non-seasonal. If you're gonna do seasonal, you need to be selling that stuff during that season and you plan like way ahead of in advance. And I've done like import export as well as selling it on Goodwill, so I'm kind of doing a little bit of both. Let's do this. Open. New stuff is the best stuff. Factory no? sealed right here. Factory sealed. And look, look, honestly, what I do is I throw a bunch of stuff in a buggy and then I come back and pack it. So we'll just toss it in there. Okay, find out what that is. Oh, it makes little wine bottle popsicles. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, well, we'll check that. That's Bitch brand new. Sickles. Okay, that's brand new. Yes, brand new. Okay. Never been opened. This is medical stuff. So, um, check this one for. Oh, you know what? This seal is broken. You see this, everybody? The seal on this is broken. So if you try to resell this, it's going to be hard to do because the tamper seal is broken. So I would put this back on and sell it. Oh, that would have been good for the RV. That's good. That might be expensive. Never been opened? Oh my god. We'll check that out. Good check. Oh, here's Huggies. Look at these Huggies. Huggies children's stuff. Always on point, but these are diapers. Diapers are pretty expensive. These are dollar ninety one for what is that? Three or? But these are uh, little movers. Four. These are the big, big, uh, big brand here. Two diapers. Okay, we'll, we'll check these because they're new. That's the only reason we're gonna check them. This is stupid. I'm not gonna check that. Filters. Sometimes you want those. Um, like I said, brand new stuff. These have hair on them. They've been used. You don't know. <laughs> Never been opened here. Okay, so let's see what else we got here. Oh, here's another one. Check that out. Check that out. That one's been opened. This one's been opened. Okay, so we'll go back to the other all. But children's toys, that's what I look for. Anything with tags or new is what I try to get. But if it's vintage, you may be more into kids than me. So, um, like these toys are not their 
I don't know what they are, uh, babies, but they sell like hotcakes. Only if they're new. I mean, this is, you gotta look at these things. If they're dirty, you gotta clean them. This is what I would look for. And I just go through this stuff real quick. And I go through shelf by shelf because I'm like a pro at this. So, Beanie Babies, sometimes you can find, look, like this right here has a tag on it. So, PJ Tot. Fanny Froggy. I have a feeling this is not worth any money, but I'm gonna put this thing anyways. And I check all this stuff before I leave, but I don't know. Everybody's different. For me, I don't like people to know what I'm doing too. So if you know something's worth money and you know you can make money off of it or you know you can resell it, I would just buy it and take it. Give me one. Okay, six flags. Somebody won this at six flags. It's not worth anything. So fine. Yep. Ooh, okay, these minis, I've actually sold these and I know they're worth money and uh, we're gonna buy her only because I know that we're probably gonna pay a dollar for her and she's worth like 15. Yeah, look, there's some of these dolls, like this weird stuff. I mean, with moccasins on it. Tags. I look for tags, but um, that's Publix, okay? Nobody's buying anything from Publix, so. Okay, these things are worth money. <laughs> but um, I don't know if they're worth anything with their tags off, but we'll try them anyway. Thomas the Train, look, he's in a box here. Thomas the Train is broken, so just kidding. Coffee Cafe Puzzle has been opened before. Anything new? New, new, anything new. Here, Sprout is new. What is this? Sprout sharing snow. Oh, it's a puzzle. Any barcode? Okay, so that's the other thing I noticed is there's no barcode on it. Um, but I don't really know kids' brands that well. You may. That could be a loss, so you gotta think about those things when you're buying. Monopoly. My first Monopoly game. I will get that. This right here. My amazing. Okay, this is backwards, and I can tell by the way it's in there that it's been opened before. Here, right, this is new. Put that in. Maybe. Okay, this has never been opened. Ultimate version. Never been opened. So, you can tell if puzzles have been opened because they're uh, sealed on the back, but. Okay, FYI, if it says Greenbrier, it means it's from the dollar store, so FYI, if you try to sell it for more than a dollar, it's probably going to laugh at you. People buy this stuff, believe it or not, blue sticks, this stuff right here, if it's never been opened, this honey will. Someone may buy it. I know it seems weird, but somebody might buy that, honestly. Seasonal aisle, stay away from. Alright, you want me so to do my stuff first? Yeah, what do we got here? Like 50 bucks? Yeah. Monopoly Junior. My first Monopoly game. Okay. Alright, so. Whenever I'm looking for stuff to sell on eBay or Amazon, I always look for things that have barcodes. So one of the things I got was Monopoly Junior. I paid $2.92 for this and I took the USB and I plugged it in on Amazon. I'm also going to put this into eBay and see um, what eBay comes up with. And I try to go by the USB because it's usually like quick and easy. Free shipping on orders over $9.99. Monopoly Junior game, $18.99. Um, and the other thing is, okay, so go over here to sold listing. Sold is what you care about because you want to know what's sold. If it hasn't sold, you don't know what it's worth. So if it's sold, it means somebody paid that for the item that you're going to sell. So we know that somebody paid 
it's trending at 1349. Um, there was a Monopoly Junior board game with four adorable character tokens. I don't know what that is. It's probably the same. Oh, it's the same thing. People describe it different. This is what you do. You go find whoever has sold this for the highest price the most recently, and you copy their listing to the best of your ability. And I'm sure you can look at it and think, okay, I can do this a little better. And if it was me, I would put a video because nobody else does videos. So you can see what this is going for. And honestly, I would pick like the top two or three sold and copy off those. And what you do is you just list it up there and see see if people are buying it. And then if not, check it in a couple days and lower the price. It's kind of like a play around thing. Somebody sold this for $46. It could be you if it's, if you're at that time, if you're the only person selling it, cause it looks like there was list, uh, one listed on December 5th and there was one listed on December 10th after that. But December 9th, he may have been the only person listing it, especially a, a buy it now. And December 9th, you're before Christmas, so somebody may have paid that for it. You don't know. It's supply and demand. Cartridges, we paid five bucks, and there were more there, but I couldn't tell. Some of them looked like open, um, but these weren't open. Cartridges, print cartridges, don't ever buy them if they're open. Um, but Clever Supplies, we paid $4.94 for them. Okay, so ink cartridges, um, you used to be able to sell them on Amazon like really easy and you can't do it as easy as before. This. Okay, model numbers are really important. So name brand, bottle number, whatever it is, you're looking it up by that. For this one, it says for use in HP Color Laser Jet Pro. So this is a comparable model. For something like this, only because me, I uh, sold on Amazon for a while, so I know they changed the rules on printer ink. Um, I would sell this on eBay. And this is the color cartridge, magenta. This is the... Cayenne. So we have the Cayenne and we have the Magenta cartridge. Okay, so these are like $50 a piece. Okay, um, sometimes you have to do a little bit of a good search for me. Clever and Pebble Toner Supply. Okay, so on Amazon, they sell a set of four for $142.99. My assumption would be I mean, one cartridge goes for 80. I think you could put these up there for 50 a piece. That's what I'm trying out, but I mean, dang. We only paid $5 for these. I found these, I don't know, a couple years ago or maybe six months ago, I don't know. I found these and they went for um, some really good money and I know that they're really funny. So, they sing to you. I mean, you have to play around with this. It takes learning, but it's whatever. The sing a jig I mean, I paid a dollar, I think, for this. And it's on here for, at the cheapest I see, is $10. And if we were to put this into Amazon, Okay, so this thing looks like it's missing its jacket, but you can still sell it. I mean, with the jacket, it's on Amazon, it's $72. On eBay, December. And like I said, eBay's cheaper. I would, you gotta weigh your options on them. But Mattel, 70, Fisher Price. So there's not many listed on eBay, which, I would think could mean you might be able to sell them a little bit better. I mean, 60, 70, people are selling these for $70 on eBay. I would list this thing for 70 bucks, maybe 50, but well, yours doesn't have a jacket, so I would start with maybe 60 and go down. Go into the Amazon seller app. Okay, so. Scan. 
So I'm gonna make seven dollars off this. They're giving me a five forty nine shipping credit. It's new. It cost me two ninety two. They're giving you a shipping credit, and I'll just continue and submit. I mean, this is not fucking easy with me. Now you know one of the four steps to getting your side hustle started and making some extra cash. Eventually, you'll be on your way to quitting your job and making this a full-time career. But if you want to get started with the full tutorial today and be one step closer to generating some extra income, then click on the link in the description below to download it now. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button below, share it with your friends, and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.